Good morning, everybody. This is going to be part two to Holly and Ivy, the story of Holly and Ivy. I was really impressed and surprised by how many people enjoyed me reading yesterday. If you haven't listened to part one of Holly and Ivy and you would like to, I will link it below for you in the description. All you have to do, do is click on it and you can hear the first um, several pages of this book. It's a really cute Christmas children's book. I'm going to get started with part two though and I think there will be a part three as well. Again, this book is not very long but the issue is how many um, words are on each, each page which is quite a lot for a children's book. But the story is really sweet. And I know a lot of people are like, I want to find out what happened to Holly and Ivy and stuff. So I love that. Um, the last thing, just to really quickly recap, um, Ivy made it to Appleton where her grandmother, she believes her grandmother lives. She went on a train and she's hoping to find her for Christmas. She is an orphan and um, little Holly is a doll in a toy shop looking for an owner. And so let's get started and see what else happens. And like I said, guys, I'm just showing you by what I mean by a children's book. Um, you might, you need to be able to read pretty good <laughs> for this one. <laughs> but anyway, it's like I said, very sweet, totally worth it. Love reading to y'all, happy y'all enjoy it. So let's get started and see what happens, okay? All right. Presently, she came to the market square where the Christmas market was going on. There were stalls of turkeys and geese, fruit stalls with oranges, apples, nuts, and tangerines that were like small oranges wrapped in silver paper. Some stalls had holly, mistletoe, and Christmas trees. Some had flowers. There were stalls of china and glass and one with wooden spoons and bowls. A woman was selling balloons and an old man was cooking hot chestnuts. Men were shouting and women had shopping bags and baskets. The children were running. Everyone was buying or selling and laughing. Ivy had spent all her life in St. Agnes. She had not seen a market before. And I won't look for my grandmother yet, said Ivy. I bet she was excited. If y'all have a market in your city, like, you know how fun that is to go through the market. <laughs> in the toy shop, Mr. Blossom had never made so much money. Peter had never worked so hard. Peter was 15. He had red cheeks and a smile as wide as mallows and wallows. He took good care of the toys and did everything he could to help Mr. Blossom. Wish went the brown paper as Peter pulled it off of the roll. Whirr went the stir ball. Snip, snap, the scissors cut off the string. He did, he did up dozens of parcels, ran up and down the stepladder, fetched and carried and took away. That abominable boy will sell every toy in the shop, got grumbled Abracadabra. What's abominable, said Holly. It means not good, said the dolls, but he is good. Dear, dear Peter, whispered the dolls, but Abracadabra's green eyes had caught the light from the passing car. They gave a flash and a rattle bang. Peter fell down the stepladder from top to bottom. He bumped his elbow, grazed his knee, and tore a big hole in his pocket. Hold on, go slow, said Mr. Blossom. Yes, sir, said poor Peter in a very little voice. Did you see that? Did you see that? whispered the dolls. Holly wished she were further away from Abracadabra. Soon all the da baby dolls but one were sold and most of the teddy bears. Malo and Wallow were taken for twin boys' stockings. They were done up in two little parcels and carried away. Hardly a ball was left and not a single airplane. The sailor doll was sold and a doll with an umbrella, but still no one had asked for Holly. Dolls are not like us. We are alive as soon as we are born, but dolls are not really alive until they are played with. I want to be played with, I said Holly. I want someone to move my arms and my legs to make me open and shut my eyes. I wish, I wish, said Holly. It began to be dark. The dusk made the lighted window shine so brightly that everyone stopped to look in. The children pressed their faces so closely against the glass that the tips of their noses looked like white cherries. Holly held out her arms and smiled, her china smile, but the children walked away. Stop, stop, wished Holly, but they did not stop. Abracadabra's green eyes shone in the dusk. 
Polly began to be very much afraid. One person stopped, but it was not a boy or a girl. It was Miss Jones, the policeman's wife. So this is Ivy when she reaches the little town. She's looking at the market right there. You see all the bread in the window and the balloons. From down the street, she was passing the toy shop on her way home when Holly's red dress caught her eye. Pretty, said Miss Jones, and stopped. You and I would have felt Holly's wish at once, but Miss Jones had no children, and it was so long since she had known a doll that she did not understand. Only a feeling stirred in her that she had not had for a long time, a feeling of Christmas. And when she got home, she told Mr. Jones, this year we shall have a tree. Don't be a draft, said a daft, said Mr. Jones. But when Mrs. Jones had put her shopping away, a chicken and a small plum pudding for her and Mr. Jones' Christmas dinner, a piece of fish for the car, and a dozen fine handkerchiefs, which were Mr. Jones' present, she went back to the market and bought some holly, mistletoe, and Christmas tr a Christmas tree. Because women, we get our way. You know what I'm saying? A tree should have tinsel, said Miss Jones. She bought some tinsel. And candles, she said. Candles are prettier than electric light. She bought 12 red candles. They need candle clips, she said, and bought 12 of those. And a tree should have some balls, thought Miss Jones. Glass balls and jewel colors. Ruby red, emerald green, and gold. She bought some balls and a box of tiny silver crackers and a tinsel star. When she got home, she stood the tree in the window and dressed it up, putting a star on top. I should have told Miss Jones to go to Dollar Tree. What do y'all think? <laughs> Who is it to look at it? Who is to look at it, said Mr. Jones. Miss Jones thought for a moment and said, Christmas needs children, Albert. Albert, w Albert was Mr. 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 Jones' name. I wonder, said Miss Jones, could we find a little girl? What's the matter with you today, my dear, said Mr. Jones. How could we find a little girl? You're daft. And it was a little... It was a little sadly that Miss Jones put holly along the chimney shelf, hung mistletoe in the hall, tied a bunch of holly on the door knocker, and went back to her house to work. Ivy was happy in the market. She walked round and round the stalls, looking for all the things. Sometimes a snowflake fell on her head, but she shook it off. Sometimes one struck on her cheek, but she put out her tongue and licked it away. She bought a bag of chestnuts from the chestnut man. They were hot in her hand, and she ate them one by one. She had a white cup of tea from a tea stall on wheels, and from a sweet stall she bought a toffee apple. When her legs grew tired, she sat down on a step and wrapped the ends of her coat round her knees. When she was cold, she started to walk again. Soon lights were lit all along the stalls. They looked like stars. The crowd grew thicker. People laughed and stamped in the snow to keep their feet warm. Ivy stamped too. The stall keeper shouted and called for people to come and buy. Ivy bought a balloon. At St. Agnes, a telegraph boy rang the bell. He had a telegram from Miss Shepherd from the infant's home. It said, Ivy, not arrived. Uh-oh, Ivy's having a good old time shopping and buying some food. So this is Mr. and Miss Jones shopping right here. And right here is Ivy drinking her caramel, whatever that is, latte. And that's the man's, oh, I'm selling the peanuts probably. All right, so the note said, Ivy not arrived. Suppose she is with you. Merry Christmas. The boy rang and rang, but there was no one at St. Agnes to answer the bell. And at last, he put a notice in the letterbox, got on his bicycle, and rode away. In her house down the street, Miss Jones kept looking at the Christmas tree. Oughtn't there be presents, she asked. It was so long since she had had a tree of her own that she could not be sure. She took Mr. Jones' handkerchiefs, wrapped them in a white paper, and tied them with some red ribbon she had by her, and put the parcel at the foot of the tree. That looked better, but still not quite right. There ought to be toys, said Miss Jones, and she called to Mr. Jones. Albert, 
Mr. Jones looked up from the newspaper he was reading. Would it be very silly, Albert? asked Miss Jones. Would what be silly? Would it be silly to buy a little doll? What is the matter with you today? asked Mr. Jones, and he said again, You're daft! Soon it was time for him to go on duty. I shall be out all night, said Mr. Jones. Two of the men are away sick. I shall take a short sleep at the police station and go on duty again. See you in the morning, said Mr. Jones. What y'all think Miss Jones going to do? Take his credit card and go shopping? I bet she, she is. He kissed Miss Jones goodbye and went out and put his head around the door again. Have a good breakfast waiting for me, said Mr. Jones. In the toy shop, it was closing time. What does that mean, asked Holly? That is over, said Abracadabra. Over? Holly did not understand. Mr. Blossom pulled the blind down on the door and put up a notice. Closed. Mr. Blossom pulled the blind down on the door and put up an... Oh, I just read that, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Blossom was so tired, he told Peter to tidy the shop and you can lock up. Can I trust you, said Mr. Blossom? Yes, sir, said Peter. Be careful of the key, said Mr. Blossom. Yes, sir, said Peter proudly. It was the first time Mr. Blossom had trusted him with a key. You have been a good boy, said Mr. Blossom as he was going. You may choose any toy you like except the expensive ones like the air guns or the electric trains. Yes, choose yourself a toy, said Mr. Blossom. Good night. When Mr. Blossom had gone, a toy, said Peter, and he asked, What does he think I am, a blooming kid? Peter swept up the bits of paper and string and straw and put them in the rubbish bin at the back of the shop. He was so tired he forgot to put the lid on the bin. Then he dusted the counter, but he was too tired to do any more, so he put on his overcoat to go home. He turned out the lights. It was no use lighting the window now that the shop was over. Stepped outside the door and closed and locked the door. If he had waited a moment, he would have heard a stirring, a noise, a tiny whimpering. What about us? What about us? said the toys. Go home and good riddance, said Abracadabra to Peter, but the toys cried, Don't go! Peter heard nothing. He put the key in his jacket pocket to keep it quite safe and turned to run home. The key fell straight through the torn pocket into the snow. It did not make a sound. Hoo-hoo, said Abracadabra, and the snowflakes began to cover the key as Peter ran off. That is not a good situation. Let me see. See, there's the key right there. There's Peter running off. And that's the, where is that? Fine baker. Of, so that's the toy shop, and that's the bakery next door. See, the baker got it right. They ain't going to stay open. They going to keep their light on because they know people want some coffee and some sweets at night. All right, let's see what's going to happen. Go read a couple more pages, and then we're going to do another continuation. We're going to figure out what happens eventually. Maybe if I hold it like this, this will be a little bit better. The market was over as well. The crowd had gone. The stalls were packing up. The last Christmas tree was being sold. Ivy had spent all her money. The blue balloon had burst, and her legs ached with tiredness. She shivered. Then the lights went out. There were only pools of yellow from the lampposts with patches of darkness between. A bit of paper blew against Ivy's legs, making her jump. Suddenly the marketplace seemed large and strange. She would have liked to see Miss Shepherd. You might think that Ivy cried, but she was not that kind of little girl. Though the empty feeling ached inside her, she pressed her lips tightly together and then she said, it's time I looked for my grandmother, and she started off to look. She walked up the cobble streets between the houses. How cozy they seemed with their lighted windows. Smoke was going up from every chimney. There are fires and beds and supper, said Ivy. Some of the houses had wreaths of holly on their front doors, paper chains and garlands in their rooms, and in almost every window was a Christmas tree. When Ivy looked in, she could see children. In one house, they were sitting around a table eating. In another, they were hanging stockings from the chimney. In some, they were doing up parcels. But I must look for a house with a tree and no children, said Ivy. She knew there would be a tree because my grandmother is expecting me. I love this little girl's stubbornness. <laughs> that's her. And that's all the trees she's passing, the lighted windows. The toy shop was still dark. Thank goodness, said Abracadabra. But people can't see us, said Holly. 
Why should they see us? asked Abracadabra. It's over. People have all gone home. The children are going to bed. He sounded pleased. There will be no more shopping, said Abracadabra, and the whisper ran around the toys. No shopping, no shopping. Then we are the ones not sold, said the doll. There was a long silence. I can be sold any time, said a bride doll at last. Weddings are always. I am in yellow with primroses, said a bridesmaid. I shall be sold in the spring. I am in pink with roses, said another. They will buy me in the summer. But Holly had a red dress for Christmas. What would be done with her? You will be put back into stock, said Abracadabra. Please, what is stock, whispered Holly. It is shut up and dark, said Abracadabra, as if he liked that very much. No one sees you or disturbs you. You get covered with dust, and I shall be there, said Abracadabra. Holly wished she could crack. Isn't that sad? It's dark because, like, they're in the darkness. The lights are off. I might read one or two more pages and then we're gonna close from there. Let me see what time are we at, 16. Probably one more page. This is my grandmother's house, said Ivy, but when she got to the house, it was not. That happened several times. Then it's this one, she said, but it was not that one either. She began to be very cold and tired. Somebody came down the street. Even in the snow, he, his tread was loud. It was a big policeman. As a matter of fact, it was Mr. Jones. Ivy knew the policemen do, that policemen do not like that little when little girls wander around alone after dark. He might send me to the home, said Ivy, and as quick as a mouse going into a hole, she whisked into a passage between the two shops. Queer, said Mr. Jones. I thought I saw something green. At the end of the passage was a shed, and Ivy whisked into it and stood behind the door. There was something odd about that shed. It was warm. Ivy did not know how an empty shed could be warm, but I shall tell you. The shed belonged to a baker and was built against the wall behind his oven. All day he had been baking bread and rolls for Christmas, and the oven was still hot. When Ivy put her hand on the wall, she had to take it away quickly, for the wall was baking hot. Soon she stopped shivering. In a corner was a pile of flour sacks. She sat down on them. A lamp in the passageway outside gave just enough light. Ivy's legs began to feel heavy and warm. Her fingers and toes seemed to uncurl and stretch in the warmth, while her eyelids seemed to curl up. She gave a great yawn. Then she took off her coat, lay down on the sacks, and spread the coat over her. In a moment, she was fast asleep. The toy shop was close by the passage. It was too dark to be noticed, though Abracadabra's eyes shone like green lamps. Shopping is over, hoo hoo, said Abracadabra. Over, over, mourned the toys. They did not know what it is when shopping is over that Christmas begins. Soon it was not dark, for the snow had stopped and the moon came up and lighted all the town. All right, we're gonna stop there. I know that's kind of a sad note <laughs> to stop on, but we're at 18 minutes, which is close to what the other video was. So I hope you enjoyed part two. And again, I'll link part one down below if you haven't watched that. If you enjoy me reading to you, please give me a thumbs up. I will so be happy to find y'all some Christmas books at the Clarence Center. I know they have so many books, so I would love to look through them and read to y'all. If y'all enjoy this, just definitely let me know. And um, two, if it would help, I could figure out actually day and time that I could read a little bit of a story in case your kids would like to like read along with me or listen to me before they go to bed so um let me know if that's something that there's any interest for down below in the comments I appreciate you guys thank you so much for the love and the support and I will see y'all again soon bye guys